When we first got a story expansion, it was back in 2020 for MK11 with the Aftermath expansion where we got to see more of the story progress as well as we got more characters to play within the story. With MK Chaos Reigns, it shows us why the multiverse needs to stop. I don't know where to fully start on this, but let me just start by just explaining like all the characters that it just revolves around. So, for this story mode, it essentially just revolves around, I'd say, four characters. Scorpion Sub-Zero, Cyrax, and Sector, pretty much. Those are like the four main of this whole story expansion, with Sub-Zero still trying to take revenge against Scorpion for betraying him in the previous story and then becoming new Saibon later on. Cyrax discovering the truth and trying to redeem herself after the actions of the wedding. Or just trying to save Sub-Zero after he goes after Sub-Zero in the other timeline. And then Scorpion who's just there to just watch over all the weirdness that's happening. Previously teased at the end of the first story for MK1, Havoc was like a titan and was planning to invade. So. He finally invades, but it's just like a one-time invasion and not like a bunch of invasions like spanning over like all over the realms. He just attacks, grabs Garrus, and takes Sub-Zero as well because he was an idiot. And starts the process to try and collect data to start the restart the realms so he can make them in his own image, which is a bit... Odd because like when you also see that you also see that he has a bunch of Garruses. So what was different about that specific Garrus that made it so he needed like that last piece to like restart the realms? You just once you reach that chapter for Sector, you just pretty much have the rest of the story up until the twentieth chapter, just going on a rescue mission to just assist Sub Zero and Garrus. And that's it. There's not really much else. You're really, you're just spending a lot of time in like the chaos realm, and that's it. There's no like other attacks, nothing else, and that that's it. There's there's not really much else that happens. It's almost like an invasion story, pretty much. It's like one of the invasion stories where they could have just did this, but they made this as an additional story in a way. You get some good outfits for Rain and Tanya, who. Who, me and the story, which are just variants from like another period that are just dragged over here by Havoc. And also they're married, so rats on the shippers for that one. <laughs> and you do also get one as well for Li Mei, which I think might be one of her best outfits, and Reiko as well. One else's outfit though, for like the chaos variants are, ugh, they're just like mohawks, green, and that's just it. Like, there's not much else to these outfits. Which is also where, this is also my biggest problem as well with the story is that you're just finding variants upon variants upon the variants over and over and over again. It's like, the, that really doesn't feel like they matter at all because they're just jobbers. They're, it's not like going to feel like a hard fight. Because so when you fuck, there are like characters like that that just like, uh, yes, they're just here to like fill in the time for the story. That's it. I'm not not like obstacles like a lot of other characters were in like previous stories because like when you throw something like that in it just feels like very lazy to me to just throw a random variant at us just for the sake of a fight i don't like that especially yes, As I, As bro i might find one more variant and yes i understand that it's like a whole oh but this is a uh a multiverse story but you just keep throwing them over and over and over again because I feel like there was even I think there was like two or three chapters where it's like have you have like five fights which is insane because like normally the max is like the minimum is like four so there's no reason to go over four for like variant fights there's no reason to do that at all for any of these. The way it ends is very odd to me because essentially the person who you get to play at at the end is Noob Saibot who is, yes, behind who, who is Sub-Zero. But now you get to play him and this is also the first time you get to play him in the story mode. Which I was excited to see that in his own chance in the story. But every time he just starts a fight it's like, let me help, no, let me help, no, let me help, no, let me help, no. It felt like I was just re-watching Sonic Prime Season 3 where I'm just hearing Sonic go, Nine, this isn't you on repeat i get it he's selfish i don't want to go through that over again 
You then, of course, get your final fight with Havoc, Emperor Havoc, where he has two unique moves, I think, from what I was finding him, where he fires like a blast beam similar to Corrupted Shinnok, and he explodes himself, giving him a chance to just recover. For a second, he'll just disappear on the screen and then come back. You just beat him in like one fight, and that's it. It really doesn't change much. You just beat him with Noob. Well, I'm surprised was able to beat him. Noob tries to kill him, but for some reason, Noob's like, no, we can't do that. We're gonna kill millions. I'm like, it didn't you do that with, with Shang Tsung's timeline? Didn't you also kill millions? Noob rebels for, I don't know, the sixth time in the story, but gets frozen by Garrus and then just gets put into stasis until they figure out a way to just bring him back. And the story just ends with Scorpion's uh, making amends with Cyrax after the events of the fighting. And that's it. They hyped up having to be this chaotic person with just, just like coming in, invading, but just taking what he needs and then, but not much else. That's it. They just bring him in, throw him at the end. He just like creates some sort of army for himself, but you don't even fight them at all. You don't fight them in waves, which I feel like that would have been understandable just to fight them before you get to have it, like you fight three and then you get up to Havoc. I feel like that would have been understandable for just that one segment alone instead of just fighting the variants. I would have preferred just to fight the Havoc closet over just him. Like, just stop giving me these variants, I get it. The thing that really just disappoints me a lot with how more Mortal Kombat's doing their story nowadays, I'd say ever since like 11, is how it's trying to utilize like the modern trends of how let's use time travel, let's use the multiverse, it doesn't work. It does not work at all. It the, the, t the whole time travel thing did not work at all for it. It only worked for 9 just because of how it was a reboot, but then with 11 it did not work at all. And now with this game, it really does not work in the slightest. Because with Mortal Kombat, it is not the type of story you do it with. With the multiverse story, it's with a the superhero type story it works for that type of storyline with mortal kombat you play it for martial arts you play it for the magic the um the different realms the mythology all of that unique storytelling is there and yet it's they had that going for the first half of the story up until the end until they wanted to say you know what let's do a multiverse which really disappoints me a lot because I thought I was really liking the direction it was going but now we're just going into a more MCU role which I really don't want to see at all for a Mortal Kombat story. I think what also makes it worse to deal with is because it's also a bundle so if you wanted to just play the characters you have to buy that as well unless they made it separate. I haven't checked if they made it separate if someone has checked and while I am editing this, they have, please let me know because I don't think the story is worth going through at all. It really isn't. Just for um, something that ended on a light note, I did at least like Le Lieutenant Colonel Johnny. I like I like Colonel Johnny. Johnny, uh, Johnny somehow made it seem like I was actually able to like him here with uh, him in the army outfit. I like that Johnny, so I'll give him that, but everyone else. I got nothing for any of those characters. <laughs> I'll probably talk more in depth about how Noob Saibai or just Beyond as a whole throughout this storyline, because I want to dive more into talking about Beyond. I'll definitely talk about Beyond more later on for another video, but I think that's going to be it. I'm sorry about how I felt for this game, and I am curious on how they are going to try to redeem themselves after this. So thank y'all for watching and be sure to tune in for your. I'll see y'all soon.